I'm not sure when orcs turned green, because they weren't from the start. The Tolkien orc, well, I believe he first used the term goblin and then moved on to his own invention, the orc. Let me just read a quote from this Middle Earth encyclopedia I've got. Within the deepest pits of Atmano, in the first ages of stars, it is said Melkor committed his greatest blasphemy. For in that time he captured many of the newly risen race of elves and took them to his dungeons, and with hideous acts of torture he made ruined and terrible forms of life. From these he bred a goblin race of slaves who were as loathsome as elves were fair. These were the orcs, a multitude, brought forth in shapes twisted by pain and hate. Their arms were long and strong like apes of the south, and their skin was black as wood that had been charred by flame. Tolkien himself described orcs to be coloured swart or sallow, as in dark brownish to dirty yellowish. And then, at some point, they became green. I mean, for me at least, it's very rubbed in. You say orc, and I think green. We generally call them greenskins. How and why this happened is somewhat shrouded in mystery, maybe even some controversy, or maybe it was just magic. One could probably write a thesis on the subject. For now, I'll just settle with that orc, skin, colour, evolved, and green is where things landed. There are green orcs appearing in Dungeons and Dragons publications from the late 70s. The first editions of Warhammer featured green orcs, and then there was Warcraft and eventually World of Warcraft, and here we are, in a world where I say green and you think orc. But as with carrots, carrots are actually not all orange. The orange carrot was engineered, so to speak, easy to grow and very tasty. Thus, it spread. Ironically, with the help of the Dutch, the orange colour being a bit funny there, but anyway, the orange carrot spread to the extent that, for most of us, we just think carrots are orange. You say orange, and I think carrot. So what about the yellow, purple, blue, white, red Carrots. Well, they're all very tasty, but they have nothing to do with orcs, apart from the fact that I personally don't think all orcs need to be green. I like my war games and tabletops to look diverse and, in a sense, random, like life itself, really. I appreciate a green orc as much as the next person, but I also think there is room for more. And so when it came to painting my space orc pirates for Stargrave, I decided to do some of them green, but also some a bit different. The purple pirate carrots, if you will. Throughout this video I'll be trying to explain my choices of paint by describing their colour and the reasoning behind the choice of that specific colour. The brand of paint, the exact colour, is not on the whole all that important. For those of you though that like specifics, there is a list of the paints used in the video description. Also, the technique of paint application is optional. I'm going to be wet blending. I like that for this type of skin. But any individual means, favoured techniques, adaptations are of course welcome. Translate this into layer painting or contrast paints or whatever suits your level and patience. Now, let's start with what I call the orc I wish I could have painted as a kid. The full-on, saturated, vibrant green orc. I've got a dark, slightly bluish green, a warmer bright green that just really shouts green, Atcha. A blood red that I will use to mix with the dark green, creating a dark grey brown purplish green, and a very light flesh tone to mix with the bright green for an Eva brighter green. My miniatures are zenithal primed. That means that they are first primed black and then sprayed with a white from up top and at a 45 degree angle all round the miniature giving me a map, so to speak, of where to paint with darker paints and where to paint with brighter paints. The nature of the zenithal prime itself will also help dull down the darker paints and brighten the shouty greens. My first approach is wet blending, sketching out the different textures, colours, shadows and highlights, swapping out the black primed areas for my darkest colours, going all the way to the brightest mix on the brightest white. After the first wet blend, I reinforce what I've already done, using regular layers of paint, this time watered down. I hardly ever wet blend with diluted paints, but for layer painting I pretty much always water down. 
Anyway, leaving the shaded areas as is, I work in layers of shouty green on the raised and highlighted areas. I do this in about two or three steps, gradually adding more of the pale flesh tone into the green mixture, painting on smaller and smaller areas, giving me brighter highlights and gradients. Next up is an icy blue orc. Vibrancy-wise, I'm going for the same intensity as the previous green. A darker grey blue, a turquoise blue, a, a muted orange to mix with a dark grey blue for the absolute shadows, and the light skin tone again to mix with the turquoise for bright highlights. The application is exactly the same as with the green orc. First wet blending to then go on to layer painting. This time pushing the highlights to pretty pale levels. What I've been considering when doing these different colors of orc skin is the intensity, the vibrancy. The first two examples here are very colorful, almost cartoony. And if one wants to mix different orc skin colors in an army or a squad, I mean, any colors is yours to try, green, blue, red. But when choosing paint, if a certain unity is desired, it could be a point to choose paints with the same intensity. Like I used the very shouty warmer green and the very shouty warmer blue, making the green and the blue orc look equally as intense. Also using the same additive paints for highlights, like I'm using the same light flesh tone, also brings the two together. To demonstrate this intensity thing, my next orc is going to be the desaturated orc. Not the orc of my childhood, but maybe more the orc of today. So I'm jumping down on the color intensity scale, going for greens that are more muted. Words like camouflage or fatigues come to mind. Using two greens, one more olive, like put your orc on a stick and dip it in the martini type green. The other a more grayish green. A brown to mix with the olive green for shadows and a pale yellow to mix with the gray green for highlights. Using a pale yellow this time instead of the pale flesh to warm the highlights a bit more but also to help retain the green just a little better. I tried to get the olive green more in the shadowy areas, toning in the grey green for highlights, giving the impression of just a little more saturated shadows and bleached highlights. Working with paler colours I think requires a bit more work in the contrast department, so I put a bit more effort in here to really bump up the highlights. And so, how would this look like on another type of orc skin colour? Well, now it's time for the orange orc, hopefully not too reminiscent of the previously discussed carrot. I'm using a pretty saturated red, a desaturated muted orange, the dark green used on the first orc to mix with the red for brown purplish shadows, and the pale yellow again to mix with the orange for highlights. The orange is trickier to wet blend, it's just the nature of the paint. My wet blend became pretty dark, so most of the orange was layered on, in brighter and brighter shades. I went pretty hard on the highlights, almost reaching the pale yellow in some places, and I've got to say that I really like how this one turned out. Also, not all that much carrot in sight. On these past orcs, I've used complementary colours mixed with the main paint to create the shade. So a red for the green orc, an orange for the turquoise, a green for the red. This results in pretty harmonious, sort of natural looking shadows. What if one doesn't want that? So I bring you the yellow orc with violet, not violent, but maybe, maybe they are, violet, violent shadows. Yellow is notoriously tricky to paint, so I figured showing how I shaded this one would be a good thing. Initially, I wanted this orc skin to feel at least a bit like skin, and not too much yellow. So I opted for a peanut butter coloured paint, a bright yellow, a violet to mix with the peanut butter for shadows, and a pale yellow for highlights. As it turns out, the peanut butter paint was just not covering very much. My wet blend did not do the trick on the first layer, so I had to repeat that process twice before moving on to layer painting on some yellow. As you can see, the shadows look pretty natural, like on all the previous orcs. So what I do is go in with a very diluted violet, and glaze is the term used, the shaded areas, building up more and more violet in thin diluted layers. After that, I finish off with the brightest yellow highlights. This technique, glazing in colors into the shadows, can be done on anything, not just purple. Say you'd like your rock to have a more prominent color in the shaded areas. This is one way to do it. There's one more orc to do, 
We could call it the mixed orc, the experimental orc, or perhaps even Alex's favorite orc. What if one likes all of it? Saturated colors, interesting shading, pale skin, warm and cold tones. I'm going to use the shouty green from the first orc, the grey green from the desaturated orc, a blue for shadows and the pale yellow to mix with the grey green for highlights. This time I'm not mixing the blue with the green on the palette for the shadows, instead wet blending the blue with the green straight on the miniature, resulting in blue shadows. The shouty green gets mixed with the blue in the shaded areas and then with the grey green in the highlights, resulting in saturated shades and pale highlights. When I moved on to the final highlights, I just didn't like what happened with the yellow and the grey-green mixture. Some quick experimentation led to a mix of both greens, a little pale yellow and a warm flesh tone. I went really really pale and then glazed on some yellow that was already in my wet palette. Same technique as with the purple on the yellow walk, but this time used on the highlights instead of in the shaded areas. In the end, I have this wonderful cold to warm, saturated to pale orc. So what about other orc attributes? They have teeth and lips, ears and eyes and all that stuff. Once more, these tips are utterly individual and also very much depends on the sculpt. These Cromlech orcs have a certain look that I enjoy very much, by the way. And my choice of paints is in a way corresponding and reacting to these sculpts. But my approach can hopefully be inspiring regardless of your choice of paint. So, let's do some lips. I start with a paint that I have difficulties to describe. It's called sandalwood. It's sort of a dark, pale, coral, pinkish color. And I use that to cover the lips completely. Then I go in and paint a turquoise into the deeper cracks of the lips, just for a bit of character. Then a more saturated coral pink on the outer edges of the lips, also covering up where there are two prominent blue cracks. And then I jump to the teeth. I'm not done with the lips, but this is sort of a joint venture here. I cover the teeth completely with a brown, then trying to hold the miniature so that I can start the brush stroke at the bottom of the tooth with a diluted off-white on the brush, moving the brush from the bottom of the tooth towards the top of the tooth. In theory, the brush will leave more paint where you stop. So this method will leave less paint at the bottom of the tooth and more at the top. If the paint is diluted sufficiently, you'll get more quote brown unquote at the bottom of the tooth and white at the top. Doing this round all the edges of the tooth can hopefully lead to some kind of nice sharp looking tooth action. Now I go back to the lips. Diluting a fuchsia, a pinkish, magenta-ish color with a lot of water, again creating a glaze. This I add to the back half of the lips, the gums I guess one could call it. Now this does get on the bottom of the teeth and that's the point. That's why I did the teeth before adding the pink glaze. To me it binds everything together, also adding a bit of gum vibe to the teeth. And now I can finish the lips off. Adding just a bit of the off-white to the coral pink, I highlight the absolute edge of the lips. Now, if one wants to be real serious on the matter of teeth, and maybe question orc oral hygiene a bit, some staining of the teeth can be a nice character move. I used some transparent brown paints. A wash or a contrast paint would do nicely as well. And added some dentist nightmares, trying to avoid getting anything on the lower parts of the teeth, not wanting to stain the lovely pink inflamed gums, and then went back again with some white on the upper reaches of these lovely fangs, just to retain a sense of sharpness. I'm afraid this is quite the never-ending video because now we're getting into what more can we do with orc skin. Obviously, anything we want. Freckles, dirt, patterns, whatever. But I wanted to do some more paling of the skin, like certain areas might be more sensitive or not as rough as the rest of the skin. As an example, I'm focusing on the ears. I'm going to give the wonderful icy blue orc some pink, cuddly ears. Using pretty much the same paints as I did for the lips, starting with the sandalwood paint. The thing here is to find a paint that has the same intensity as the surface I'm about to paint over. So if this ear would have been darker, a correspondingly darker paint would be required. Anyway, once that sandalwood is in place, I've essentially changed the color from turquoise to coral. Now I can highlight that coral and also add more pink to it. 
and that's the cuddly pink ears. Other colors can of course be glazed in. Instead of overdoing the pink, I did essentially the same first steps as previously, but now on the ears of the uh, desaturated orc, but then glazed in some yellow to warm them a bit, making them correspond a bit better to the rest of the skin tone. And so what about the eyes? Well, I have a favored approach here when it comes to color. This is only a thing if you're like me and want your orcs to look like a bag of M&Ms. If you're dead set on the fact that all orcs have, let's say, red eyes, then yeah. For me, I want as different an eye as I have colors of skin. But I don't want the color of the eye to mismatch whatever else is going on with the paint job. And I don't want the eye to dictate whatever else I want to do with the paint job. So before doing the eyes, I finished the rest of the mini. These Space Orc pirates got a mix of khaki-inspired outfits, one even got jeans, shorts, uh, metallic-y bits, all very piratey. Also, I tried to do things just a little wrong. They are orcs, after all, and they are pirates. The orc sense of fashion probably being a little bit different from ours, if you haven't just now time-traveled here from the 80s. Anyway, so like the desaturated orc here, it ended up with some orange gas mask things. Good thing I didn't paint the orange eyes goes through my head. Instead, I settled for turquoise blue. First a dark blue covering the entire eyeball, and then a smaller blob of turquoise giving a slight glowy feel. The very green orc got a blue shirt. Good thing I didn't do blue eyes goes through my head. Instead, I'm thinking orange-ish. Using first an orange that I then darken down with a contrast style paint to then highlight the middle of the eye with brighter orange. Using washes or contrast paint can be great on eyes to get into the recesses where the eye meets the skin. Finally, on the yellow orc, I decided to go with green eyes. Notice, by the way, that it's got matching hat and shoelaces. And there we are. Orc eyes done. Orc skin done. And orc pirates pretty much done. Oh, and if you're wondering about claws and nails, think of what I did to the teeth. A brown and then some thin white. It's a good place to start. I hope these orcs can not only act as visual examples, like what can a red orange orc look like? Or what would it look like to paint all my orcs a little different? But also that if you like, you can go beyond my specific examples and create just the right orc for you. I've tried to visit different topics that hopefully can be helpful regardless of what type of orc you're going for. A lot of fun can be had. Even if one is totally set on the fact that all orcs are green, one can still play with saturation. Lesser orcs can be pale and massive orcs can be more saturated. Or maybe just that one shaman has been tainted by magic, making its skin practically glow. This is, after all, a hobby. Our hobby. And as individuals, we can do whatever we feel looks great to the miniatures we have in front of us. Mm -hmm.